Thank you. I'm here at Scared Fresh. Looks like everybody joined now. I want to welcome you guys to guest in Gusto Scared's virtual series of conversations in digital content with the creators and innovators remaking Goja. I'm Rafael Gomez, Director of Fashion Exhibitions here at Scared Fresh, as you can see, and I'm delighted today to introduce our good friends Vanessa and Robert Ferrer. Robert is a London-based fashion photographer known for capturing iconic images of backstage. During his acclaimed career, he has worked with American Vogue, Elle, Harper's Bazaars, revealing the moments behind the curtain as models and artistic teams bring fashion designers' visions to life. Vanessa is his right hand, serving as his agent, and more recently archiving decades of photographs, contact sheets, correspondence, etc., and creating the collection, also with the, oh, helping with the books. <laughs> Together, they have published in three monographs in the Unseen, a series of backstage photography of Alexander McQueen, John Galliano, and Mark Jacobs. And last November, the Ferris work with published Thames and Hudson to release John Galliano for the photographs by Robert Ferrer, covering a decade of Galliano's imaginative designs. Here it is, from 1998 to 2010. <clears throat> Our upcoming exhibition in 2021, uh, exhibition at Scared Fresh, will be focused on image features in this book. And I'm excited that we are able today to give a special preview about our project together. Please be sure to follow them on Instagram at Robert Ferrer. And also I'm delighted uh, to introduce uh, Michael James O'Brien, our associated chair of photography, who will be today's moderator. Michael, I pass it to you now. Fantastic, Raphael, thank you so thank much. You, um, we're here talking, as Raphael said, to Robert and Vanessa Ferrer about the photography of the 10 years that they've been working. Uh, we're gonna talk about a lot of topics. There's a lot of wonderful work to look at. And so please uh, keep some questions in mind, send them to the chat and we'll try to get to them after uh, Robert and Vanessa have talked about, about their work. Um, the first thing we have to do, first order of business, as all of you know, is we have a poll question and you will have a chance to win a copy of Alexander McQueen, Unseen by Robert Ferrer. So tell us uh, which project you would like to hear more about today, Access Backstage, Book Publishing, the upcoming exhibition at SCAD Fash, or adopting adapting during the quarantine. So um, if you go ahead and do that now, here's the poll question coming up. And afterwards, uh, we'll have a chance to talk um, with Robert and Vanessa with some of your, your questions. We're thinking really primarily today about photography, about how work ev evolves during the years when you're working, collaborating, <clears throat> and the various people that you get to meet along the way. Well, we go, Robert. They can still see you even though you can't oh, see Oh, no. Them. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're there. Hi. Um, what you told me? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, very firstly, I, I want to say Vanessa and I have been together for 36 years. So this is no sort of short-term thing. Um, we met when we were very young. And uh, essentially, we were probably together for about 10 years before we actually started working properly together. Um, so we had our, our separate careers and then uh, and then and then serendipity sort of brought us together work-wise. He needed some help, basically. Needed help. Yeah, he couldn't do it on his own. He thought he could, but yeah, he needed some help. Well, this is a show that McQueen called uh, What a Merry Go Round. And I think it was in 2001. It was held in a recycling station in London in Gatliff Road. Um, not a very hospitable environment to work in. Um, as you can imagine, they sort of laid down some cheap carpet on the floor to sort of cover all the mess. Um, and it was very basic out front for all the uh, for all the guests. They basically sat on benches, if I remember rightly. Um, and I wanted to show you just the, the sort of the mess and the destruction that, that, that was a, a McQueen show backstage in the best possible way. Um, and then on the right hand side, the full sort of finished image of, uh, of, of what we were able to achieve through lighting and uh, cooperation of the girls and, uh, and, 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 and 
And this image is nearly 20 years old, so it's a contact sheet. And obviously we're keen to hear from the students, you know, the processes that you're using. But so this was a contact sheet. And in this particular show, I think we had 49. We wanted to scan them all and put them up for you to take you through from start to finish an Alexander McQueen show backstage. But then we thought there wasn't enough time now. Can you all hear it? Is everything good, Michael? This looks fantastic. And I think the thing is, uh, Vanessa, um, to answer that, our students are learn everything. They do black and white, they do cyanotype, they do contemporary post-production. At the moment, we're slightly restricted because of the um, safety uh, protocol, but we do everything. And I also encourage our students when they're printing, when they're making digital images to do a contact sheet, because talk about that mm. process. For example, Robert, you've gone backstage, you've had access, it's difficult. Now you've got the contact sheets. Is this a self-fueled project or have you been commissioned by McQueen to do the, which well, I think changes your editing process? It, it really does. Um, to answer your question, uh, granted access, no. Uh, found a way in through the back door, perhaps maybe. Um, created a small diversion and slipped in. It, it was quite a, a hostile environment backstage in the beginning. But, but in 2001, Robert had spent two, nearly three years with Harper's Bazaar USA under Liz Tilbury. So he was an established photographer. You're seven years into Robert's career now. And he's, he's really, you know, he's flying and this is London. And, you know, we have a lot of friends that were acquaintances and good friends of McQueen. So we drive hard to get into this show. You do mm. never, ever want to miss a McQueen show. Absolutely And not. so I think, you know, that was part of your sort of, your fuel, wasn't it? Was the, you know, just, you have to get there. Go on to the it's next the page and you can see a fashion shot. The, um, Let's go on, because that was just go. to give you an illustration of the- So basically at this point, yes, I was being, I was being commissioned to do this, paid to do this. Um, as Vanessa said, seven years before, or maybe for the first five years, it was all self-funded, yeah. um, which is- Incredibly hard. Very hard and very expensive. And uh, you know, there's a certain amount of risk to it. Um, and with the contact sheets, uh, at this point, yes, we, we, we were happily contacting everything and printing everything because the client was, was paying, for, paying everything. for it. Yeah. yeah, we went from funding everything. Sorry, who is the client, Vanessa? Harper's Bazaar USA. So it was right. Liz Tilbaris and Kate uh, Betts. The great Liz Tilbaris. Those were yeah. the golden days, golden well, years, right. actually. They were. Amazing and person. Exactly. And, mm. you know, so we've always done very well in America. And here we are again, back in America. So thank you, exactly. America. Welcome um, back. But a I long think, run this time, I hope, longer I even. So. Wow. Um, so you have access, you have, you're commissioned. So to a certain extent, now do you both go backstage to do these, Vanessa? Are you with Robert guiding and pushing him around the room or does he just do it all by himself? Absolutely no, not at all, never. I never go on set, I never go to shoots. If I can wangle my way a seat in the back, you know, front, whatever, back row, in, you know, see a show, a McQueen show in London, I always would in the early days to help him, but I'd always be thrown out and, and and, and, you know, London's a very particular place. It's quite anarchic. And um, but I had friends in, in, in good places that would try and get me backstage as well. But no, you, you just don't. Even for Robert to stay was a big deal. McQueen was a tribe and it was a yeah, very, very difficult close. tribe to get into if you weren't a member of that tribe. Um, but obviously we're now in 2001, we've got the attention of Sally Singer at American Vogue and she was the fashion features director and she was already keen to employ Robert. So this is February 2001, the show. Um, it's obviously, it's, it must be, is it, it must be, is it spring, summer, yeah. Raphael, Alexandra, or is it autumn, winter, this collection I'm looking at? I think it might be. Maybe uh, an autumn, winter. Autumn, show. winter. Okay, autumn, winter, yeah. So we're, we're literally on the edge of leaving Harper's Bazaar and going to American Vogue for 9-11, um, basically. That was the first day at Robert's, mm. Robert's job working for wow. American Vogue for 9-11, if you can believe that. I mean, yeah. So New York obviously didn't happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, and no, um, they were very, very kind to us. We did carry on and go to Europe. So I don't know what the next shot is, but it must still well, be McQueen because we've got Let me team. ask a question, Robert, about while yeah. we're looking at this. We can see the contact sheets. We see the mess you described in the background. So when you go in like this, let's say you're seven years in, so you're fairly confident, obviously, of getting images. But can you talk a little bit? We talk a lot with our students about access. And if you don't go, you're not going to get the picture. If you don't click the camera, you're not going to get a picture. So we know that. Part of access is being physical and getting yourself to the place 
where the pictures are going to happen, whether it's Cartier-Bresson or Albert Watson mm -hmm. or anyone you, they've got to be there to know what they're looking for. So can you just talk maybe a little bit about, do you have a kind of baseline where you know, okay, I can count on that, I can count on that when you walk into an unknown that if you have to suddenly, oh my gosh, panic, well, there's so-and-so or there's a hat or their balloon, something that will link you to a moment to get you through that sort of, um, uh, let's say uncertainty. My faculty, one of my faculty members calls it the gods of photography, that kind of combination of control and spontaneity. I know that's a very long question. I hope I didn't lose you. But how do you go into it thinking, okay, here I am, I'm going to make this work in case there are some challenges you weren't expecting? Well, I think the, the first thing to say is that before you even walk out the door, there's a huge amount of preparation that goes into, uh, into trying to gain access. The telephone calls, faxes, uh, latterly emails, of course, that didn't exist in the beginning, um, and, and hundreds and hundreds of calls every season to, to all the designers to try and persuade them to give you access beforehand. 30% of the time, 40% of the time, uh, you, you, you will get some sort of confirmation. And the rest of the time, you, you turn up at the door, you look. I mean, most of, most of the backstage area is controlled by uh, the, the, the press office, the PRs. Yeah. Um, you never want to make enemies of anything. Well, no, they're formidable, that's for sure. <laughs> you move around. They're yeah. always there when you least expect them. Um, wonderful people, I, I assure you. And... Um, they, 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 you know, if, if you turn up at a venue, that's who you have to try and look for first off to, uh, to, to get you in and, and to plead your case to. Um, I don't understand the rest of your question though, Michael. Well, do you have, when you go in, are there things, let's look at some more pictures and we can talk I as like, we go through. Well, I, I just want to understand if there's a, you know, a moment in any situation like this where something clicks for you and you go, oh, that's, I know that's going to be my picture. Something that happens where there are givens about a girl, you know, or, you know, photographing a certain situation with a makeup artist. But I think if we look at these, we're going to get a feeling of what what your baseline is for getting a great a great picture. When 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 I go into to a backstage area, I would I would I would there'd be a sort of formula that I'd follow. I I go in there, I'd put put the equipment together, get the lighting up. Right. Um, That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Probably be going through the process of hair and makeup. Um, so you know. Essentially, I go in there, I, I photograph that process of them being made up. I'd say hello to everybody that I knew, hair and makeup artists, models alike. Everybody gets comfortable with your presence. You look around, you see where the potential backgrounds that you can use are. You pop out front, you see what the lay of the land is for the actual show itself. Uh, perhaps, rarely, but sometimes it's more exciting on the other side of the curtain where the crowd are because there's a real, real show going on. But... <laughs> Most of the time, I prefer to be to be backstage. Um, so you, you then there might be a rehearsal. So you'll watch the rehearsal. You see where the girls are going out, where they're coming back. You try and gauge where it's going to be busy. If there are any fast changes happening, you want to stay well away from that because otherwise you're going to get yourself thrown out. Um, all the time I'm looking around, seeing if there are any particular accessories, shoes, bags, jewelry, anything like that that's that's worth photographing. See who's wearing what clothes. Um, who's the first girl out? Who's the last girl back? How many models are there? How long is the show going to be? Uh, who's the person calling the order of the show? Do I know them? Um, I think I, the other thing that's important to sort of just make, make a, a, a comment about is that Rob started shooting the runway. So he was selling runway picks. So if we go into the next shot, Robert, can we go? That go. is number 13. That's great. Mm -hmm. section. Um, a, one of the biggest fashion moments of all time is absolutely no doubt about it. And um, but we were selling pictures. We were a mar and par business at home working in our flat selling catwalk pictures, mm. suddenly with 1993, starting with McQueen, Philip Tracy, the people in London, Robert actually did Graduate Fashion Week and got McQueen's second show and, and, and all the up and coming London designers working more with them and then increasing his, you know, our sales, his footprint went from London and then everyone said, you've got to do Paris and Milan and then you have to do New York. And New York wasn't really happening in 1993, 94. I'm not even no. sure if you had shows yeah. in New York. You yeah, probably had- Small showroom shows, but not yeah. big runway shows. So, I mean, I think, you know, seven, eight years in, as you just said earlier, Michael, we're, we are selling to clients. We're selling these pictures. So Robert's going in with a very clear brief of 
Right. These clients want beauty. Yeah. Most of our clients didn't want McQueen. Let's be really clear. Nobody yeah. really wants to touch McQueen so in the, the middle of the thousands, yeah. okay? So we are being a bit naughty giving you this wonderful fashion art theatre, but it's because it's so strong and it's work that we just so truly believe in mm. and enjoy. Well, I think one question that's, that's part of that, and Robert just mentioned it, Vanessa, you said you use the word lighting. And I know I'm pre a question that's going to come up for sure, but are you lighting these? Is it strobe? Are you using existing light? Just to tell us a little bit about the equipment you're taking as we go through the pictures. Well, if we go through, I mean, obviously this is on the runway. It's beautifully lit right. and got shot. A, a perfect example of a show where it's better out on the uh, out on the runway than it was uh, backstage for sure. Um, I use strobe, I sometimes mix it with a little bit of the available light if there is any. A lot of the time we're shooting in virtual darkness. Right. Um, occasionally, occasionally. That's a beautiful one. Yeah, it's, it is rather, yeah. rather stunning. I think in the front row, who can we see this? Uh, There's Isabel Blow, Blow yeah. beneath that sort of central. Where is Isabel? She's got Isabel, a, oh my God, you can see the hat. hat. Recognize the hat, Raphael, and Isabella Blow. Yeah, Grace Jones, Philip Tracy, the lineup, and Joyce McQueen, McQueen's mother, is sitting next to Isabella. Mm -hmm. And then to the left, you've got, I think it's Domenico Del Sol, Jonathan Newhouse, Hilary Alexander, wow. and Ronnie Cook Newhouse. But what's really interesting is Robert's, that's probably the British press, the sort of the European press. Robert's actually sitting here next to Andre Leontali, Anna Winter, Grace Coddington, Michael Roberts, yeah. Stefan, you know, I mean, just the you know the wall of america on this side so that's quite interesting i'd love to see the seating plan you're this doing this from the audience there. this is mm -hmm. from the audience robert this is from the audience okay yes. i see so that went around yeah great exactly. let's speak. look at some more because i know we're going to want to see everything and you have a lot now just tell us when we change from mcqueen for those of us who aren't hardcore fashion well Raphael can tell us but what are we changing now are we still with McQueen plenty. this is one of plenty this is yeah. McQueen okay. is and we wanted to show the strength of the makeup I mean not yeah. too many people other than Isabella Blow can get away with walking down the street looking like this Lady Gaga you know but it's wonderful wonderful fashion yeah. it's exciting that's it's a great one you know, wow. the it looks like Lee Bowery was an influence exactly. on this yeah. collection yeah. a big influence yeah. Excuse me, Guido Paolo doing the um, the hair, Recycled Philip Tracy cans doing the hats, the hats and headpieces, and, and Peter Phillips doing the makeup. I mean, you're now the makeup, Peter Phillips. Peter Phillips. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the narrative behind all his stories, again, if you get the book or you can read about it, guys, you had that amazing exhibition, Savage Beauty, at the Metropolitan Museum. There's always information online about Alexander McQueen and great people you can follow. McQueen Vault will tell you so much about McQueen if you want to, you know, delve deeper. And you must, you must. If you're doing fashion or photography, you have to because, look, he worked with Nick Knight. He was he was a visionary genius, a genius. Did you do more than one book? Did I see two book covers? That was the American version and the uh, rest of the world version. The Americans wanted a very literal um, image of... of uh, and it was Yale University Press who was yeah. super, super great to, in, you know, to publish our book. We were, we were just thrilled because we weren't sure. You know, you're never sure. Are you sure, Michael, when you're a photographer? But no, that's that's one of the challenges. And then you come back five years later and you saw the great pictures you missed or what ones you should have chosen. But I think the process we're going to talk about as we go through, because I know we want to talk about how you all make the transition from backstage, from doing books, which is a very different initiative and then into the exhibition that's upcoming at, at SCAD Fash. But I have a feeling that this is Galliano, am I right? Yes, we've now moved into the colorful world of Galliano. Okay. Dreamland, yes. Galliano's dreamscape. So this again is about 2001. And it's so interesting because obviously he was doing his own line. He's doing Dior when he left Givenchy and he went to Dior. Right. Scat, um, Raphael, was it 2007? He first collection at Givenchy? No, 1997. This is the trouble, the decades, they all blend into one. But so he's doing his own line, which is very much, you know, a laboratory. And he's also doing Dior. I mean, you can imagine the work. Now, this is Galliano we're looking at, right? Yeah. This is all Galliano now, yeah. Who brought the great backdrop? Uh, the great I, I backdrop. I was there a little bit before me, Nigel, but uh, I have no idea. It's just something I found and threw a chair on it and thought, you know, yeah. why not? Hat not, by Stephen yeah. Jones Having is a little, little mouse, I think, sitting in the top of that hat. It's absolutely is. adorable. Sure. Is there still backstage to be done now, Robert, or is it this moment more or less in the I, past? 
I think this moment has gone now. Um, Me too, and uh, obviously COVID. Um, it's it's you know you'll never get these crowds you know in the next couple of years. Yeah. Uh, going forward, but the last time I did a show, I was shooting for Tom Ford uh, in New York, and um, even though I was shooting for him, I wasn't allowed into the dressing area until the very last girl was fully dressed right. in her outfit. And I've spent 20 years in, in this sort of environment. I turn my back to people who are changing. The camera always goes down. You know, there is sort of no nudity that's, that's, that, that I've ever photographed. And they know that, but they wouldn't let us in until all the girls have been changed. And you, you, you've missed the images. There's no fun. There's no energy. There's, you know, exactly. when, when it's, it's, it's very aseptic, if that's the right word. Um, so I think is that a word? Is aseptic well, it's, a word? It's a word now. Well, antiseptic. But anyway, we know what you mean. Yeah, clean. <laughs> yeah. Antiseptic. Anyway. We're you know what? Well, now hang on a second, Robert. All these large groups. Can you just give it? Just walk through with our students. You your eye was over here maybe, and suddenly to out of your corner of your eye, or looking straight ahead, you see a large number of people. What do you do? Do you run over? Do you call out? Do you link someone to stop and stand still? How do you make a picture like this happen with everyone looking at the camera and looking great? Okay, How do you well, do this, that? This one was in a, in a theater in Paris and the girls are going from the basement up to the first floor where the stage is, because that's where the fashion were show Were they was. walking or were they taking a, a, a large yes. elevator? I can't tell. This one, in this one, they're taking the elevator. Okay, good. And, and they all just sort of Call, pile in, pile in, pile in, well, you know, it's a little bit sullen or whatever, and you go, oh, wow, girls, this is wonderful. Turn, smile, give me a pose. You know, and they suddenly all go into character. I mean, I've well, known them for on, many, many something. years. Andre Leon Talley is standing next to you, and in a minute... Okay. That's a big, that's a big miss, <laughs> Vanessa. Let's, wait, let's step back a second. Okay, so here you are with Andre Leon Talley, as you know, who's a great SCAD supporter. He's done wonderful yeah, things here, yeah. and he's been teaching and doing exhibitions. He's an extraordinary person. So here's, he's with you at this moment. Is that what you're saying, Vanessa? Yes, he is, because Andre did love this incredible backstage. book called yeah. ALT 365, okay. and we were hugely complimented because he's got a photograph of Robert, I think, on one of Robert's friends, associate's shoulders, um, and there'll be a, an assist, a lighting assistant. Robert always has a lighting assistant with him. He forgot to tell you that. Yeah, sorry. And um, Andre has a picture of Robert on the shoulders. I think it's Jason yeah. um, taking this picture. But, you know, and then he's off the shoulders, and it's quick, because there might be, I don't know, in this instance, there could be five or six other photographers that will be in different spots. But you're right, they're looking at Robert and it's great. And we're gonna own that. Um, let's go on to the next shot because I know we're really running out of time. Again- Did you say lighting there. assistant, Vanessa? You have a lighting yeah. assistant at this point with you? Who, okay, great. That's good to know for our students too. Good, okay. Well, we've always had an assistant, Michael. And I mean, at this point we had the wonderful Jonathan Regal who um, left us to go to Annie Leibowitz. So that's not too bad. And he's worked with incredible people, Mark Seliger and uh, Mary Ellen Mark. Absolutely. And, you know, so he yeah. came and worked for us for American Vogue for yeah, what, seven, years, eight years. And an amazing guy. So technically brilliant. Very talented. Um, you New know, York based. Yeah. Taught Robert a lot. Taught me a lot. Uh, wonderful guy from Texas. Really, you know, thank you again. America. So Jonathan and I would have this merry dance where I'd be in front of the girls, let's say, and he'd be running around the back, edge lighting them. I might have a little flash on the camera just to pick up detail in the in, in the front of the garments. Um, but that's what we were able to do is to separate the people in a way from the background or to light the background separately or to give a hair light or give three-dimensionality to the images? No, I, think I think that's very useful information. I'm not going to make you do a lighting diagram now, but later on, my student, when you come to uh, Atlanta for your exhibition, we're going to have to have a master class in how you do all that. Because the students, you know, a lot of them were working alone. Yes. And the days of having, I had three assistants at some point for several yeah. years, and that's totally over. So let's keep going, because I'm worried about losing the images, but the okay. conversation is just what we want to talk about. Good heaven, More that's a great vision. one. Yeah. Erin O'Connor, fabulous model. So this one managed to get into the lift and get out of the lift, but couldn't get onto the catwalk. So Dresses, this dress yeah. was never shown. Yeah, and Stephen Jones told you that. He, yeah. You know, I mean, Stephen John Jones, worked with very, you know, with, with his people. Again, he had the same team, Pat McGrath, incredible makeup artist. Oh, she's you know, Stephen Jones and- um, Stephen has been in, um, has been in Atlanta yeah. also visiting. Yeah. 
Right. Wonderful. Oh, right. That's a and great that's picture. Is, you know, so yeah. this is what happens when everybody's upstairs during the show. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. This yeah. is it, the dereliction. Yeah. It's not glamorous. If you think it's glamorous, it's not glamorous. So when you go into a situation like this, you have to find a corner, an area, a, a background, maybe another dress, something to, to, to create a beautiful image. Um, but it's really not, as you say, And glamorous. you love this image. And, and it was interesting. Ivan Shaw asked Robert, uh, the American Vogue photography director, and now he runs their archive. Um, and he's a great friend. He chose this uh, to do a lecture that he um, that mm. he did several years ago, and it was great because. And actually, Galliano chose this to put in the. John Galliano, currently stores. now, yeah. yeah, not John Galliano, the designer, but his company yeah. did, yeah, to give a backstage landscape. The family that eats together stays together. Again, Pat McGrath makeup. You know, the newspaper in the hat. I mean, like, we can't wait to sort of. Yeah. This won't be the Dior exhibition, but the inventiveness, the imagination. But it's slightly you know, more painterly, painterly light on this. So, yeah, this is all. They actually filled the backstage. Eye. Yeah, Brassai and inspired. This is an homage to Brassai, this collection. And they filled in the Paris, backstage. 1920s, 1930s. Yeah, you can sort of feel it, can't you? Keep going, I think. Robert, when you go back and you do these, do you make a distinction between one designer? You, you obviously researched it. You know the designers. You know the girls. These pictures have a different, much darker atmosphere than the previous ones. So my question is, they're dark tones from the clothing. But do you also find a way to light them? Or You can't position the girls. You've got to take them where you find them, right? Well, actually, no. No, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it really depends. If I, if I see a beautiful tableau in front of me, I'll photograph it. I won't, I won't interfere. Um, occasionally I might ask somebody for their attention to look or to look off camera. Um, and then sometimes I'll take a girl and ask her to go and pose, you know, in the corner of the room or sort of on the edge of the runway or somewhere, somewhere, you know, more controlled. Um, it really depends on, 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 on circumstances and, and what's happening. Sometimes it's just too crazy in, in, in the mix and you can't get a clear photograph. So you have to pull somebody away. Um, in terms of the lighting, you, you take it in. I'd love to say, yes, I looked at every collection and, and decided that, right, we're going to do a three quarter backlight on this one and uh, on this. No, you don't I mean, have the time. He's shooting eight to 10 shows a day sometimes. Yeah. And this oh, is a okay. five marathon. Yeah, you don't, you don't really have the time. You can you can put a nod in that direction. But uh, so now we're moving into deal. I hope people aren't offended by this, but it's just inspirational. In many ways. By, uh, no, I think no, we're good. <laughs> okay. No okay. problem. So this is Superfly Girls collection, autumn into 2000, 2001, of John Galliano. This is Galliano for Dior. Yeah. Exactly. Obviously, we recognize the newspaper printing. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. I mean, you know, Robert's work was always glamorous and sexy and um, beautifully lit. As he said, we talked about three dimensional, but unusual, rare. But he had great, great access because he's a uh, he's very clever the way he moves around a room quietly. And you see things all the time, don't you? You're, yeah. you're, you're I mean, th th this is it. I think, you know, if anybody were to head backstage, they wouldn't necessarily sort of pick up on these moments. They happen very quick, very fleeting. They come and they go, uh, replaced by something else. So um, I, I think it's it's been a few, gosh, a few years of, of, of sort of training. I, I, I guess like a sports photographer. You well, I, know where the ball's going to go. You know where the action's going to be. You have right. to but you also have your favorite girls. Absolutely. You know, he has Maria Clara, this one being yeah, one of them. You know. yeah. Fabulous model. Fabulous. Now, we had a, a, last week, we had a great port, young portrait photographer named Michael Joseph, and he talked about, he does street photography, but every one looks like an Avedon studio. And he oh. showed us pictures on the street in Provincetown with a doorway. And then yes. the person, and he's standing on his assistant's knapsack to get the picture so when we yeah. see those you realize that you have to bring sometimes or find it where it is and i think the backgrounds in these and that for the depth of field that you've got and all the ways that you've done these make them very individualized which obviously is part of your what's so great about these pictures and why he'd get 10 page fashion stories sent yeah. a book you know we yeah. had a six eight page story in american vogue and we yes. thought hello you know, wonderful, and um, you know, you're a made man, but it doesn't always follow students. It doesn't always follow. No, you I'm have to keep not. going and keep sure. going and keep going some more. You can't stop pedaling. Well, 
No. How do you, let's keep looking, but I do want to ask you um, within the context of the time, if you imagine the initiative, the two of you yep. working together, the backstage pictures, where they were leading you, obviously to the books. And then when you work with the books, is there a large team on those books, graphic designers and editors, and or the yeah, two of you have a lot of input into that? No, it's a very tight team. We're very, very lucky. Yeah. Robert was introduced um, after seeing Savage Beauty in, 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 in New York, and then it came to England um, in 2000, and I think it was 15 it ended. We had a bit of courage because we had a few, few flat years, 2009, American mm. Berg rang up and said, I'm sorry, Robert, it's over. You know, no more contract, no more, mm. no more fun. You're out on your own, kid. Off you go. And so, you know, it was quite devastating because oh, yeah. we'd been there for a long time. We were doing other work for them in other areas, but quite rightly, Anna Winter felt it had moved on. And it had because the backstage had just become a nightmare. I also think of the accountants as well. Well, no, obviously, Anna. but no, yeah. of yes, course, right. because of the huge recession yeah. that we all experienced. But I think... Um, oh, I'm almost lost my train of thought. Where was I going? About getting into the books, the idea of putting the oh, books yeah. together, it's Vanessa. Amazing. Introduced to Adelia Sabatini, Thames and Hudson, London. Incredible, incredible lady. I mean, for five years I'd been editing. And believe me, we have millions and millions of photographs, so you have to edit. And it's physically very hard. It was funny, you were saying about your lady that came in for three and a half months and got, you know, got through it on Pepsi. Mm. Well, I mean, I've been doing this for... 1993, mm -hmm. 26 years, yeah. and I've, my arm is gone, my eyesight's gone, everything's gone, <laughs> um, but it's worth it. Um, but we went to Thames and Hudson, um, we went to a few other publishers, they weren't interested, and then they went, yes, let's do it. And we went, we'll start with McQueen, they went, yes, let's do it. And they gave us a contract that same day, September the 22nd. Now, Vanessa, mm -hmm. hang on one second, because I have to go, go on to what you're saying, but for, is that Shalom Harlow? Yeah, Shalom Harlow. Oh, yeah. God, one of the great. Okay, so having said that, you have to shop around. Well, no, I we, want we, the students to understand that. First of all, you're talking about the beauty. You're talking about collaboration and meeting people and knowing people as you move through. It's such a beautiful picture. You could crop it anywhere. That face is unbelievable. But um, so how do you face rejection, if I can ask that? We know what happened in 2008-9, but if you bring a book to someone and you're proposing it, what gives you the energy, the challenge to keep going and sending it elsewhere till you get a yes? I can't believe you're asking me that when it's 2000 and what you, yeah, no, no, 2015, when you've been in the business since 1993. The business is one of rejection. You have yeah. to keep going, you have to keep pushing and you have to constantly re-energize and, and believe. I mean, for me, it was very easy. I'd had a history of fashion and then so when Robert would come back with this amazing photography images that I would edit whilst he was going off onto the next leg from London, he'd go to Milan. I'd have thousands of transparencies to edit through to deliver to clients. Mm. I could see him growing. I could see him expanding and he loves this. He's so happy when he's got a camera in his hand. He's out shooting beautiful girls, beautiful dresses. I mean, anything. It's a great picture, by Just the way. Just a born photographer, Michael. Do you not think that people are born as photographers? I don't know. Tell me. Say the Ask me that again. Do you not think photographers are born? They're a particular type because I think, you know. Yeah, it was that's, a good that's a big question. We're gonna have that seminar when you come about <laughs> that concept, but I think it's a combination. Uh, you wouldn't lead yourself to doing this. The hat must be, yeah, unless well, you, you were would, You would, because it's, because it's fashion and it's addictive. And I'm sure Raphael feels the same way with, you know, the exhibitions and your amazing Alaya exhibition that we've been you know, an Adrian exhibition, which we've missed. and. You know, it's kind of an addiction fashion. If it's not an addiction and, and, and photography, but if it's not an addiction, Rob got a real buzz from doing the shows, then don't do it. Find something right. else. It might be still right. life. It might be street photography or architecture photography, architecture. But yeah, we love this. We really enjoy this. This is our big thing and it unites us. And well, know, at, at the I moment, think. then, giving the idea of progression, Vanessa and Robert, leading towards the exhibition coming up a year from now at SCAD Fash. So is that the direction you think you're going in or are you utilizing all these various components of your careers? Or are you sort of moving from books to exhibitions? Is that the right way to describe it or not really? Right. Yeah. We're, we're trying, we're trying, we're basically, the plan is, I mean, I manage the archive, I manage the work. And so we're in our middle fifties. And so at best 15 years, 70, what are we gonna do with this huge thing? Our children don't want it. 
So, you know, I'm looking to place it in a museum somewhere. Mm. Um, Raphael. <laughs> no, no, it's terribly funny. I was talking to my mother-in-law, Robert's um, mum last night, who, you know, is just amazing. She's a matriarch and that Raphael's met her and Alexandra, I don't think has. Um, but we, you know, I said, oh, we've got to scan the archive. We've got to get it ready. We've got to place it because we're really the only people that know where anything is or understand of course. it. Yeah. And she said, well, you better start now then. And I thought that that was brilliant because I said, I've got a 16, 17 year projection into the future. And she said, get on now. it, you know, and that's the truth because you know, it's, it's, it's millions and millions of images and I, uh, images. I'm not saying they're all fantastic, but there's at least 100 to 200,000 that are. And if the, the remainder are, are very important moments in fashion history. And we have here, this is a one-stop shop. Is that what you call it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. come to us. You know, we want to, we want to work with museums. We do work with museums. We work with books all the time. We still work with Vogue. We work with all the editors at Vogue. We work with all the people we've come across in the business since 1993 to this very right, day. Right. But Thames and Hudson gave us the break, Michael, because Thames and Hudson did the book. It got to the States. It was recognized by some a lovely guy, Jeffrey Fellner, New yeah. York Journal of Books, who did incredibly exciting reviews for us, who then introduced us to Raphael. And then Raphael came to our studio expecting a box of transparencies, Raphael. <laughs> and then he went, oh, my goodness me. <laughs> what have you we know? got here? And so how exciting for us. But I think this has always been our destiny. We're very That's lucky. Fantastic. Uh, Robert, I, I can see there are so many questions, but I want to on the on the chat, but could I ask you, can you go to the that's my next question. I'd love to talk about the Anderson and Shepard picture, which we're seeing now. First of all, it seems to be only men, which is a big transition from what we've been seeing. Anything you had to change to do these very obviously set up, constructed formalist photographs? I know that it's all about the client, but can you just talk about how you shifted gears from backstage chaos into these photographs with men that are very constructed? First of all, who did the casting, by the way? Was that the client? I think it was a chap called Joe Hindle, actually. And, and no, I Adam must explain, Hindle, Adam Hindle. Adam Hindle. Yeah, Hindle. Joe Levin was a stylist. Great director at I know yeah. Joe, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Anda Rowland was the lady that put this all together, who has this wonderful bespoke store in uh, Savile Row, just off Savile Row, called Anderson and Shepherd. Yeah. And, and what she did, she's a, a real dynamo. She um, got together all the stuffy old tailors in Savile Row and said, stuffy listen, old go, well, they hadn't, they, 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 they weren't progressive. Stuffy, but they're actually very cool and they, they rode, motor, ride motorbikes. They're very cool, <laughs> yes, but they weren't, they weren't promoting themselves. And during right. London Fashion Week, she said, we need to do something, guys. So single-handedly almost, she got them all together, got them to make the suits to the right size, all bespoke, uh, found the venue, got the models, found the funding to, to, to put these shows together. And essentially this, in a way, is backstage because this was a yeah. presentation they had at Lord's Cricket Ground. Um, about a hundred models uh, in probably six different rooms. Uh, and then Can you show us a few more while you're talking? Yeah, sorry, because sorry. it looks to me, Robert. That's the only one like, we have here, but I will show you the others. Um, okay. What's the next? What was the other one you just about? This this show? one is the one that they did the following season in okay, show got it. Bunker. Same thing, all men's wear, uh, and a series of of rooms in the cabinet war rooms. Uh, look at that, older man too. Michael. Robert isn't telling you, this is still backstage. This is backstage. There are 850 to 1,000 people milling around. This is behind a glass wall. Yeah. Normally you have wax work. Um, Dummies. Sort of, yeah, yeah, wearing clothes, a few, pretending to be Churchill. But this was a live a presentation. Yeah, yeah. And, but it is, this is backstage. There's, there, there are hundreds of people walking down a very tight passage. So the difficulty is in getting everybody's attention, allowing them to do what they have to do until you're ready. Because of course, all of these were lit, including the one out in, uh, in, in, in Lords. Lords. by Jonathan. Uh, so that, that was all uh, lit with strobe. Um, but, but Robert, these are totally constructed pictures. There's no oh, indication that you're standing in the middle of a chaotic moment. That's no. what I think is so brilliant about this work. And um, you can clearly see the influence of your backstage pictures, the placement, the sense of movement, but yet here you've got everyone standing, looking, and, and in, in a tableau, not, not in a kind of accidental or, or spontaneous 
uh, situation, which I think, who are these people? Did you use tailors from Savile Row or were they, were they models, the older gentlemen? Some of them were, the, these are actually, well, we've got David Furnish. Married Elton, to Elton John. Elton John's husband. Right. Kenneth Cranham, I Thank want you. to say, but I'm not sure. No, that's Kenneth Cranham, who was in either Snatch or Lair Cake. They, they, Brilliant they actor. They can't see what you're pointing oh, okay, to, unfortunately. Okay, so, um, so, so it's John, not in the middle, because the middle guy is the guy that's in Harry Potter that's the big wizard. What's he called? Michael, Sir Michael Gambon. Yes. Yes, right. And he's pretending to be Churchill. And they were having a laugh whilst Robert was shooting this. Believe me, yeah, they look I'm good. sure. Go from serious to... <laughs> They're actors. <laughs> They're and all Shakespearean actors. To the left of him is A.A. A. Gill, a famous writer-critic who's sadly died, restauranter. And it's Sir Kenneth Cranham. Then Sir Kenneth Cranham, then... Sir John. No, 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 um, no, no. I've forgotten, but uh, they're all very, very big. Big in British actors. Yeah. And so that is, yeah, I mean, it will come to me. David Furnish and... Yeah. Well, Raphael, what do we want? Should we... Are there a lot more pictures? I think this is such a great counterpoint. Oh, no, no, we're um, done. This is Robert, it. hold that one. I mean, you've obviously told the models what to do yes as yes. opposed to hoping or finding or connecting with them as you've done the girls is that a very different dynamic or did you segue in, into it really easily i uh, know i think i segged into it very very easily i really enjoyed my last couple of seasons backstage i started shooting everything landscape and trying to create these tableaus backstage with um, jonathan with jonathan and it worked it worked it worked very very well you haven't Great. seen any today but for me, this is what I love doing. It's it's organized chaos. I mean, yeah. in a way, and constructing something under very difficult circumstances. I mean, it, it, with all these images, Lords, the works, I probably Queen. had three minutes maximum to wow. organize it and shoot it. Usually, I mean, it, it, this we would have not pre-lit it, but decided exactly where the lights were going yeah, to go before. We would have had a walk through in the morning. But you also had control here, whereas at backstage you had no control. That's true. And, and yeah, no, I, I love the idea of control. I mean, it, that, that combination, obviously the pictures you did backstage led to the feeling of lightness in these. They don't look stiff. I have to segue to a question um, from Lena Wilt. The question is, what was your fate? What were your favorite show or shows to photograph? What moments stand out to you that even years later you say, wow, I'm so glad I caught that? Oh. That must be a big question. I'm sure you have many, but. It's a really big question. Um, gosh, I mean, I think it has to be Dior and it's, it's possibly that moment with Shalom Harlow that you saw in the huge white dress. That's an extraordinary picture, yeah. Uh, I mean, nobody else around. She was just there. It was a it was a court picture. She's a great model, um, and 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 I, th I think it's with all these things. Once, if you don't have an invitation and you get into the party and you meet the star, you know you've had a really really good evening. Do you know what I mean? Right. Far better sure. than if you just turned up with your ticket waved in and sort of wandered into the you know private area. Um, so I think when 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 I've really struggled to get somewhere like crawling through a window to get into a McQueen show and then you're there and you shouldn't be there. <laughs> That's that to me is, 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 is uh, I, the great moments. Related to that, I think I have another question from a student, but I want to follow up on that for a second. I always ask this, do you have releases from each and every one of the people you put up? I don't mean a fashion picture like this. When you're backstage spontaneously, do, is it a blanket release or you don't uh, have a release? <laughs> Kind of a blanket release for editorial use. Okay. So anything advertising obviously couldn't work. If I ever did anything for a uh, makeup brand, which I did very often, I worked a lot with Shiseido, uh, they would have a look at everything I shot, but then they would have specific models that they would have, uh, you know, that they had agreements or with. Or that the makeup artists had a relationship with, okay. saying so check that it was they, all right they, with they their agency. Have, they would have had releases for that. Um, okay. In terms of books, we generally tend to ask for releases. Yeah, and from the agencies, no. and we yeah. sent everybody a book the first season. Yeah, I did the same yeah. thing when I've done that. I, you know, if, if somehow in the original session there were no releases; it was blanket yeah. for Condé Nast, and we have to get them later. One of my students, Dante Hill, is that there's a, several questions in this one. I'm going to try to isolate a little bit down. So, uh, do you develop your images? And I don't know if he means uh, development process. You don't obviously process your color film. The no, lab does it. The lab does the color film and the printing, contact sheets and everything. Uh, anything that comes in digitally that I shoot now, I do process myself. 
um, I have a very light hand and I know exactly what I want. Uh, right. It then will obviously perhaps go out to, to the retouchers. Um, and be, for the book. And well, for if it's, jobs, it's for a book jobs, or a commercial yeah, yeah, job, absolutely. it would. Um, but otherwise, I'd be doing everything myself and it's hours and hours and hours. And it's got so much computer. work since lockdown. I mean, oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, I, I think those those days are sort of behind us. I still shoot black and white. I have a separate camera and the other camera's color. I don't want to think I can convert it later. You know, like a lot of students do, I'll make, I'll change it. So for me, coming from way old school, black if it's not in front of the camera, I'm not going to, yeah, I do black and white and color, but I, I do it separately. I don't think I'll just fix it later, you know. With a digital camera? I do black and no, 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 film. Oh, okay, with film, okay. Medium format. But yeah. um, uh, so, by the way, Timothy Keating points out that Michelle Gabon was the original singing detective on the BBC. Thanks, Tim. Yes, he um, was. That was incredible. <laughs> yeah. That was an incredible, was incredible um, series. Wow. Yeah. And it oh. had Ewan McGregor in it, didn't it? Wasn't Ewan McGregor the young, the young singer? Yes, of, of course it was. Oh, my Absolutely. God. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, um, I just want to add in one thing with all the backstage images, just to make a rob for my back, everything is shot medium format. In the early days, a, a Hasselblad analog, then a Contax uh, 645, a Fuji GA oh, 645 as well. Every, everything, everything shot medium format. Which it makes I such a difference. I can see these two. I still use the Pentax 67 I had in college. I've got five of them and they always working. I've got a great question. Uh, and we knew we were going to talk about this. We're all talking about this. It's a very important part of conversation that's got about inclusivity. And I want to get the name right. Um, Malachi Alston is asking, can you talk about improvements you've seen in racial diversity in the industry? Can photographers have any influence on that? I absolutely. think we can absolutely oh goodness, have yes. influence. Absolutely. All the clients I work for now are looking to use uh, models from all ethnic backgrounds, um, a very, very healthy mix. During my time backstage, there were certain designers. I mean, I have many, many uh, model friends who are black um, who would never bother going to a casting for this show or that show, no names mentioned, because they wouldn't be cast. They, they knew it. They wouldn't waste their time. Um, I obviously I haven't been involved with, with these shows since about 2013, but I mean, I can just see from, from Vogue.com and all these websites that obviously- It's all changed. Know, it, it has Very positively, I think here in England, yeah. you know, with Edward Enenfall, now the editor at British Vogue, you know, there's, there's huge progress and, you know, it's an exciting time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that, I think we've seen it and it's certainly welcome and critically, critically okay. important. Um, do we have other questions? Let's see, we're talking about racial diversity. I think a lot of people are very concerned about that. And I know with our students, it's a topic that we have constantly. I do want to ask you this. Can we just talk about one? Um, you have a, a, a very nice compliment from our friend Marie Griffin, who wants oh, us all to know. Oh, we love yeah, Marie. She's here. Here oh, she Marie. is. She loves you. Hi, Marie. And she wants us to know that we already know that Robert's a master backstage photographer. And that's clear from just a few pictures that we've seen. Um, can you talk a little bit as our last thing um, about the process, just a little more specifically from all this work, Raphael arrives, he sees the daunting amount of uh, images you have in your archive to narrowing it down, the process you go through mentally and creatively together to make an exhibition. Is this your first exhibition of this kind or probably not, but the one you're having a year from now at Scale? Scale, yes. Yeah, 100%. We've got some artist friends who are terribly naughty and since the early 90s, they'd have a show every year and they'd go, it doesn't matter, you've got to have a show every year. And we'd be like, oh, but you know, and also we were working for magazines. So we almost felt like the magazines it was their work and we were just, you know, oh, oh, all powerful magazine, yes, we'll do anything you want us to do. And so obviously once we were released from that, we had a certain amount of freedom and it's very important to say, I referred back again and again to Ivan Shaw, our photography director in American Vogue, talking about the, the books and the possibilities once we were no longer obligated to the contract to American Vogue mm. and seeing if it was all right and would, you know, would Anna mind? And, you know, there's obviously a very important protocol you have to follow 
so that you don't upset anybody because you just don't want to do that. And um, Marie Griffin, I was just thinking, didn't she get you that lovely Jason Mewes shot uh, show backstage? Was it Jason did. who did Jane Kelton's dress? You know, so so many people came back to Robert. So many people, you know, we've had such kindness in this industry, but it is still tough. It's still really tough, students. And you, Rob says, be really careful because on the way up. Oh, all the people you meet on the way up, yeah. Be kind to them because when you're on the way down, oh, ooh. You know, <laughs> you'll be passing them in the corridor. Yeah. And I think, um, oh, again, I lose my, my train of thought. No, we were talking about the, the train of uh, work that goes into perhaps producing. Uh, yeah, and permissions, I suppose. It was, I, I'm well, no. not sure what. Well, how do we go about choosing the images oh, for a show? I mean, well, it's, no, we, we, I think we want SCAD to put their imprint on it. I mean, we, we know we're too close to all of this, Michael. You know, Robert's never going to look at his work and go, isn't that glorious? I'm satisfied because he's always going to know what the thing was behind it and what he could have done better. And he's also thinking about the next job. It's really important to say to all of you students, Robert never really looked at his work. So he'd shoot the work. It was thousands and thousands of images every season. He never really went back. I'd ring him up. He'd be Milan. I'd go, oh, my God, that McQueen show was fantastic. This is great. You know, always encouraging him, always motivating him as his agent, as his sales rep. Um, but I think um, it's very, very difficult for you to be, um, what's the word? You know, um, no idea. well, to choose images because, yeah. you know, ah, it's really great when someone comes in, you know, we need to be curated. We need people to come and tell us. Mm. You need you need feedback. We need fresh eyes as you well. Know, you if you're too creative, close you need someone to tell you you're great. You need to have someone to tell you carry on, you know, and that's well, been my no, job. I, I think that curatorial collaboration is critical. We all feel it, we know it. And certainly, I've been here for five years, I've been at SCAD for five years, and all the exhibitions I've seen with Raphael, with Alexandra, have totally looked different. Each one looks nothing like the one before, they totally are involved. And I think the trust that you have to have someone come in and curate, and you know, I think photographers are the same, either you love every picture you've done, which is a huge mistake, or you hate them all, which is also a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> so that process of going through and saying, and if you have someone else doing it, I think it's it's extraordinary. Um, Raphael, do you want to do you want to say anything to us about the process or where you are with that now, or is that a big secret till we see the exhibition uh, a year from now? No, it's not a big secret. Uh, we already made a big pre-selection. The exhibition was actually supposed to be on now because of COVID, right. we postponed it for next year, and. Uh, I think, yes, it was not easy because it was so, so much good materials to choose from. And uh, I don't know how many spaces like this we could have filled with everything that, um, that it was offered to us here at Scared Fashion. I think it was not easy, but uh, it took a while. Of course, it was something between Robert, Vanessa and us here at Scared Fashion, but uh, I think we are almost there. Mm -hmm. But also your Dior clothes, because you'd go to Paris and, you know, you'd go and have a discussion with Dior about the clothes yes. that they lend you to go with some of the photographs. I mean, you've That's had well. so many trips to Paris, haven't you? You're traveling, you know, it's incredible. Yes. Yeah, so once when we chose more or less what we are showing, yes, we had these meetings with Dior Heritage in Paris. And we are lucky to have some of the looks that you photographed here in the exhibition as well. So the visitors can see also the scale, the, the, how, how big these garments are. And, and I think once you see one of those garments, you can appreciate even more like these photographies that you have like this, all these models together. And yes, it's, it's overwhelming. I think it's, it, it really shows a, 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 a gives the visitor a chance to, 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 to feel what maybe you were feeling at this moment with all these pieces, all these looks together and, and maybe the environment, the, 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 the music and the stress and back, uh, on the back, in the backstage. And, and it's also something that don't exist anymore. If you see the backstage nowadays, they are like showrooms because everybody now got a mobile, everybody's taking pictures. And maybe you see the show before it's even on the catwalk because everybody's posting. Yeah. And this magic, it's gone. What we are seeing, it's really a 
it's a, a historical document because backstage are completely different now. They are beautiful showrooms. The most important models are very in the front with huge posters with the names. It's our advertisement now. Mm -hmm. And this was the real deal back at the time. Or oh, it was different, let's say. It, it was... You were at Vivian Westwood and, you know, you know about the wonder yeah. of that and, you know, the creation. Because Vivian is doing the hair, Vivian is making last minute, minute adjust, adjustments and, you know, it's a creation. Yes, I remember at the, at, the, at, the, at the very beginning when I started, the backstage was a backstage. It was a big mm -hmm. mess because no one was seeing it. And at the end, my God, it took us forever to prepare it because uh, we knew everything is being photographed. Everything needed to be displayed, all the jewelry, all the clothes in a way that it will be the best for the camera. We were litting the backstage in a, in, in, in a form that... Uh, when people are photographing, you would be already advertising. It's, yeah, it, it, it really changed completely. And that's even, yeah, Vivian Westwood, it's a shame that it's become so commercial because, you know, you can't. Well, we changed with time because uh, now, yeah. uh, it's all shows, everybody's photographing in the backstage. I think yeah. all brands, they realize it and uh, they are aware of it. And the, the what but was- they don't the do it well. I don't think they don't do it well. There's no imagination because I think Robert years ago met Terry Jones of ID magazine in London. He said, I like your work, it has great energy. You capture the moment. And I think I said to you earlier today, I think we have to capture your imagination as people looking at Robert's work. So if it's not capturing your imagination, we failed. You know, that's the business. You know, I think um, Raphael, Vanessa, I, I have about 20 more questions, but we have to wind up. I'm not going to ask the question now, which our students are asking, but we'll have to do that when you. Thank we, you for joining us. Um, is how what your advice is. We'll do that later, because I think what we're looking forward to is the process. We've seen the books, which are amazing, and the backstage pictures, and then to imagine what this exhibition will look like, the selection process of the pictures you use, and the size and the sequencing, which I think is almost an equal part of that process. So this is amazing. I think you to talk to you and, and hear the way you collaborate, and um, is there any, any last word? Do you want to have the last word? I prefer you have it, Vanessa Robert, about anything you want to tell us. Just don't give up. Yeah. If you're in this Thank business, you. fashion, photography, all of us, we're in this together. And, you know, hold hands, get through this. We and don't know what lies is, ahead, but it's a great opportunity for the young. I really think you. you're in an amazing place. I would say that if you are given an opportunity, grasp it with both hands. Don't give them what they expect. Go above and beyond right. and wow the people that, that, that you're working for that are giving you the opportunity. And in doing that, your career will, will fly. And really now That's is great. your moment. The world is yours, the young, because we've failed. It's your turn now. And, you know, adults will back you up. People will back you up, your family, your tutors. You've just got to go forward, everybody. I, we really feel that. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I totally agree with you. And I can't thank you enough. We're looking forward to your being here, being back with us. We'll get some more conversations going with our photo students, but thank you so much. Uh, everyone's saying how incredible the talk was and love the pictures and they have your Instagram. So you better get another Instagram account, Vanessa, because you're going to be bombarded. I've oh no, I'm private. I'm private. This is very rare for <laughs> good, me to come. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> At Vanessa Farah. No, no, no. Anyway, take care, everyone. Be well and be thank safe. Thank you so much, and Raphael. Mask. Thank you. Wear a mask. Yeah. And thank vote. You, well, in our case, vote, but that's another conversation. Wow. Thank Absolutely. you so much. God yeah. bless. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Cheers.